Hello, everyone. If we could kindly take our seats, I think we're about to start. Good evening, everyone. It is my pleasure to welcome all of you to this very exciting, high-level ministerial side event. Allow me one minute to introduce myself. My name is Lee Winnewicki. I'm a soil scientist at C4E Craft based in Nairobi, Kenya. We are all here today to mobilize global action for drought resilience. Droughts put livelihoods and ecosystem at risk. So we are here because business as usual is not an option. This event will feature the importance of a collaborative approach to address drought proactively at all levels to ultimately build drought resilience. Allow me to repeat those two key words, collaborative and proactively. As you can see, we have a full agenda today. So I am delighted to get right down to business. It is with my pleasure to give the floor to Ibrahim Thiao to provide the official opening remarks. Thank you, Ibrahim. Thank you very much, Lee. Good evening, everybody, uh, honorable ministers, representatives of international organizations, uh, ministers in the, in the row, and colleagues and friends. This evening event will last 90 minutes. So in the time we are speaking, over 100 people will die of the effects of drought. Drought is a natural hazard, but it does not have to turn into a tragedy. If it does, it means that we fail to anticipate, to prepare ourselves, and to respond. Droughts bear different names. Hot and dry winds can be called Sirocco, Santa Ana, or Diablo, Leveche, Leste or Levante, Hamsin, Ghibli, there are many names that are associated with these hot and dry winds that are known in dry areas. These winds are not only hot, but at times they carry dust storms and they carry disease. They can also create critical fire weather conditions and they can fan wildfires. Droughts have different faces, and they carry different names as well. They can be called forest fires, wildfires, energy crisis, like hydropower, or even nuclear, nuclear power plants are being stopped for lack of water, because we need, they need cooling. Droughts can be called disruption of water, of river flows affecting fluvial navigation, as is the case in Germany, in Bonn, where I, lived, I live. Droughts can bring famine and humanitarian assistance. Droughts kill wildlife and livestock, as we, we see at the moment, we observe in the eastern part of Africa. They affect economy. They affect peace and security as well as human security. So these are very complex phenomena. And complex issues require coordinated approach. Our current approach to drought isn't working. It is not working. It has not worked for a long time. We wait for it to hit hard before we fundraise and mobilize resources and response, and we try to save as many lives as possible. 
we need to, fo to move from a reactive form to a more proactive approach. Last week, here in this very COP, the President of Senegal and Spain took the lead in creating the International Drought Resilience Alliance. This is a huge shot in the arm for efforts to invest in drought preparedness to pave the way to reduce the vulnerability of soils, crops, livestock, economies, and humans. The Alliance aims at mobilizing the leaders to create the political momentum required to ensure that all countries, cities, and communities are prepared for droughts instead of just responding to, get to them. So as you know, the question is not whether or not there will be another drought. The question rather is to know when the next drought will be coming. And next drought will, may come next week, next, week next, next month, in the next six months, or the next year. Now we need to move to the next steps that the, now that the alliance has been created, we need to, better pre, to be better prepared. And the alliance should be working together for, to establish, to create a political momentum and a roadmap to enhance support at the highest political level. It was great to see your leaders at last week's event. But we need more leaders, and we need more organizations, more private companies to come and join hands, because these are, again, very complex issues. It will be very good if a governance system is established to organize the alliance without making it too complicated. But you need some form of organization. We need some form of a small committee. Some, some people may call it steering committee. It doesn't matter the name. But you need a small group, a smaller group that can work together and report back to a larger constituency. So we hope that the government of Spain and Senegal will actually lead in that process. We are very lucky to have the science and technology on our side. But we must use it. Many people think that we don't have enough science and data, but we do. Whether we use it properly or not is a matter that we should discuss. And this alliance can help precisely build bridges between those who have the data and knowledge and those who need them. The UNCCD Secretariat is happy to play an active role and continue to play this role working closely with the co-chairs, Spain and Senegal, and with the core group that I mentioned earlier, which should be constituted of countries, organizations, NGOs, science bodies, and so forth, while still remaining small, but a larger constituency would be needed. So in conclusion, let's say that droughts, unfortunately, are here to stay. Droughts have always existed. Since we are in Egypt, they existed, they, they are documented since the pharaohs 3,000 years ago. But they are, hit, they are hitting harder and they are more intensive now than ever. And this is one of the consequences of, clim of the climate that is changing. Thank you. Thank you so much for those welcoming remarks, Ibrahim. And I'm so pleased to now hand the floor over to our colleagues from Spain. And we welcome you to give your remarks. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, it is a great uh, honor and a great satisfaction to be here today to, um, to have the opportunity to keep on going to develop this initiative. Uh, we have heard much about droughts, but it is very important to, to keep the, uh, the threat of uh, droughts in mind. In the um, period from 1998 up to 2017, the economic losses due 
to drought um, are about uh, 124 billion US dollars, not to mention the cost in human suffer or even in human lives. And um, it's true that droughts have always been a threat for humankind, for food security, and so on and so on. But now, when crossing these impacts with the climate change menace, we can see to what extent it becomes an existential challenge for many regions in the world. Nobody can be immune, but we can work to improve our capacity to resist, to build resilience, to build solutions, so to anticipate in through early warning systems, through the capacity to introduce additional sources of water, or to improve the management of the resources, both land and water. The chain of impacts increases the risk derived from other natural disasters. And this can lead them into very relevant economic and social impacts. We know that preparedness, reducing impacts, building resilience, can relate to many different SDGs. Reducing impacts is very much connected to the achievement of uh, poverty reduction, zero hunger, good health and well-being, gender equality, clean water and sanitation, sustainable cities and communities, life on land. And uh, it's true that for a very long time, for a very long time, droughts have not been perceived with sufficient awareness, with sufficient concern by the general public. But this is not anymore the case. The cost and the need to react, the impacts of persistent droughts in many different countries are very, very dangerous. The lack of awareness can lead to ineffective response or even to failure. This is why we started to think about building this alliance, a flexible alliance that can be built around some different approaches that have been learned and uh, put in practice in the last years in different regions. It can be anticipated and it gives enough warning for a country to prepare. And droughts pose an existential challenge in the poorest communities. So, being effective is also a question of social fairness, of equity, and building opportunities everywhere. The reactive crisis management approach that has been um, the, the long-lasting approach for a very long while is highly inefficient. Shifting from the crisis management mode into drug preparedness and adaptation measures can significantly change the risk of vulnerability and impacts. Partnerships between public and private players, partnerships between different communities, different regions, different players can facilitate matching finance, matching projects, matching knowledge with needs, and matching technologies and capacities to be much more prepared. This is why an ever growing awareness along the different communities in the international uh, society is growing up. And we have some positive and inspiring steps that have already been taken in the last months. We have uh, in this room the president of the UNSCCD conference in Abidjan. And there, in that occasion, the 197 parties decided to act together on droughts. They agreed to establish a new intergovernmental working group on droughts, tasked to look into possible options, including global policy instruments and regional policy frameworks, advocacy, financing, and implementation at all levels to boost drought resilience. So, a very relevant step forward. At UNFCCC COP27 Leader Summit, in the last week events, we launched the International Drought Resilience Alliance the Prime Minister from Senegal, the Prime Minister from Spain, aiming to go beyond disaster response and go to promote international cooperation for effective and efficient preparedness and climate adaptation measures to reduce countries and communities' vulnerability to droughts by enhancing drought monitoring, forecasting, and early warning systems. Mobilizing tools, investments to reduce drought vulnerability coupled with adaptation to a changing climate. So thinking, planning, investing, and promoting policy decisions in a different manner. Much more resilient, much more grounded on the type of threats we are facing. Actions to increase social awareness and environmental resilience. And facilitation of different levels of participation among different players. 
We have got a very positive response during the last weeks, the weeks in preparation of this launch, and before that, the week that has uh, been going through uh, since the launch of um, this alliance. In total, we can count on a much more effective list of countries and different players being interested to join this initiative. 30 countries from all regions, eight UN bodies, four regional bodies, seven financial institutions, multilateral development banks, climate funds, and four very relevant civil society organizations. This shows to what extent this is a concern that is shared all over the world. Everybody knows that we need to build resilience to this problem. So, knowing that it is absolutely essential that we drastically reduce greenhouse gas emissions to reduce the risk of extreme events such as droughts, knowing that we need to invest so to avoid the certification and land degradation, knowing that we need to invest in restoration of biodiversity and ecosystems, we must also increase the resilience of our communities and ecosystems to cope with droughts. And we need practical action on the ground. We are facing an immense challenge. Four out of nine limits to the planet's survival have already been exceeded. Climate change, biodiversity loss, land use change, and biogeochemical processes. But we still have time to keep within the safe area and to build resilience to avoid the worst impacts of our threats. All four of these uh, menaces are related to the mismanagement of the Earth's resources, soil, water, and biodiversity. And it goes beyond that. It menaces the food security and the stability of many communities and regions. The response to this environmental, health, social, and economic crisis, therefore, requires a rebalancing of the relationship between the way we intend to produce prosperity and the impact we cause to the main sources of prosperity. Both domestically and in the multilateral sphere, the actions of the government of Spain will be oriented towards the conversation of the natural capital, and we know that we have much already learned on management of drought crisis, and we, much, we have much to share and a special responsibility, so to build alliance with different partners all over the world, and very much in particular with those being interested and counting on the capacities, on the intentions, or the needs being identified to be part of this alliance. And those willing to be part of this alliance will count on the um, great uh, commitment, great engagement of um, the different associations and countries, nations that have already expressed their intention to be active players in this uh, action plan. Thank you. Thank you so much for those very energetic and motivating remarks. And I am so pleased to now hand the floor over to our colleagues from Senegal, please, um, the floor is yours. Merci beaucoup. Madame uh, Teresa Ribera Rodriguez is a good uh, pronunciation. Thank you. Ministre de la Transition Écologique de la République d'Espagne, Monsieur Chao, secrétaire exécutif de l'UNCCD, Madame, notre honorable modérateur, je, veux, je voudrais d'abord féliciter Madame Teresa Ribera Rodriguez pour euh, cette alliance internationale pour la résilience à la HSRS, que nos deux chefs d'État ont eu l'honneur de lancer en marge de cette COP27. De nos jours, nous évoluons globalement dans un monde où les risques de nature économique, sociale et environnementale, voire idéologique, sont fréquents et d'ampleur croissante. Ces risques souvent interconnectés appellent à développer de nouvelles approches et méthodes de gestion. C'est pourquoi la question 
de la résilience est aujourd'hui au cœur de tous les débats, étant donné qu'elle traduit la capacité à résister et surtout à s'adapter aux effets et impacts des multiples crises et catastrophes. Au Sahel, comme partout dans le monde, nous subissons de plein fouet les impacts des changements climatiques qui se traduisent par des phénomènes tels que des sécheresses récurrentes ou des inondations et une dégradation continue des terres. Tous ces phénomènes se déclinent. Je disais donc que tous ces phénomènes se déclinent par une intensification de l'insécurité alimentaire et nutritionnelle. Mesdames et Messieurs, malgré les effets des impacts alarmants de la chasseresse, l'heure est à l'optimisme. En effet, la chasseresse des années 70-1970 a sonné le réveil de la communauté internationale. Et depuis, nombre d'initiatives sont prises pour lutter radicalement contre la chasseresse. Parmi ces initiatives figurent en bonne place le comité permanent inter-État de lutte contre la chasseresse au Sahel et l'initiative Alliance globale pour l'initiative Résilience au Sahel Agir. Cet événement parallèle permet la facilitation du partage d'expériences très enrichissantes au niveau mondial, régional et national. Expériences développées dans différents secteurs et à différents niveaux. Il a permis de mettre un accent particulier sur les politiques les plus appropriées. Le plaidoyer, le financement et les mécanismes intégrés et durables de mise en œuvre. Les différentes interventions ont mis en exergue l'importance, mais aussi la pertinence des approches intégrées et inclusives dans la mise en œuvre des programmes de lutte contre la désertification. Ceci implique naturellement la mobilisation de tous, les acteurs étatiques, la société civile, le secteur privé, les institutions universitaires et la recherche, les organisations de producteurs, bref, toutes les parties intéressées par la question. Honorables invités, cette initiative louable est le visage déterminé d'une mobilisation concrète face au problème de la CCRS qui, dans notre continent africain plus qu'ailleurs, constitue un défi structurel. Nous formulons le souhait qu'elle soit la plateforme d'une mobilisation soutenue et pratique afin de traduire les engagements politiques en actions concrètes. Dans ce sens, nous appelons à la mise en place d'une véritable alliance contre la désertification, dotée de ressources financières et technologiques adéquates et propres à une action efficace. Le combat que nous menons contre la désertification et la dégradation des terres est véritablement une lutte existentielle qui s'oppose à tous et à une Afrique avec une activité singulière. C'est pourquoi j'invite tous les pays, eu égard aux enjeux climatiques, à adhérer à cette initiative et à contribuer activement à sa réussite. Réduire la vulnérabilité à la chasseresse, permettre le déploiement de solutions spécifiques et maîtriser le stress hydrique, tels doivent être les fonds, les fronts de combat que nous menons à la désertification, un combat de tous et de tous les instants. M. Tiao, nous sommes des générations qui avons vécu de façon rude les phénomènes de désertification. Les années 70 ont marqué l'évolution de nos États en termes de contraintes, mais également d'orientation de choix politiques et économiques. Aujourd'hui, cette initiative est à saluer, à encourager et à développer. Et j'espère, Madame la Ministre, que nous aurions beaucoup d'États, de pays qui adhéreront à cette initiative pour que, ensemble, nous luttions efficacement contre la désertification. Je vous remercie beaucoup. Thank you so much for that perfect segue into our next session. Ibrahim called us to move from being reactive to being proactive. 
and we've heard these two ministers really urge for a collaborative approach. All countries. We don't have all countries here today, but we have quite a few, and we're very excited to give an opportunity for these countries to come to the podium and address us for three to four minutes, because we know droughts are multi-sectoral and transboundary in nature. So what we'd like to hear from these countries is how can governments enhance effective coordination? And specifically, I ask you to, uh, to state your expectations for this International Drought Resilience Alliance. I know Ibrahim will be taking notes on your expectations. And the second part of the question is, what specifically can your government bring to the table to move to practical action? So I'll tell you the order that each country will come to the podium. We will start first with France, then Germany, then European Commission. I ask you to come to the podium in that order and please introduce yourself and the ministry that you're representing. So I invite France to the podium to kick us off with some remarks on your expectations and what you can bring to the table to move to practical action. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Mesdames et Messieurs les, les Ministres, Monsieur le, le Secrétaire Exécutif, pour tous ceux qui ne me connaîtraient pas encore, Bérangère Couillard, je suis Secrétaire d'État à l'écologie en France. Voilà, tout d'abord, permettez-moi de, de remercier l'Espagne et le Sénégal dans cette importante initiative qui est l'Alliance internationale pour la résilience face à la sécheresse. Je remercie également Monsieur le secrétaire exécutif de la Convention des Nations Unies sur la lutte contre la désertification, cher Ibrahim, qui organise aujourd'hui cet événement. La France a souhaité rejoindre l'initiative Hydra, car cette plateforme collaborative nous permettra d'une part de partager les enseignements des nombreuses réflexions et actions en cours dans mon pays, et d'autre part, de nous enrichir des retours d'expérience des autres participants. Je pense à ces sujets fondamentaux que sont les, la sobriété des usages, l'accès à une eau de qualité et la restauration du cycle de l'eau. L'épisode sans précédent du stress hydrique qui a frappé plusieurs parties du monde cette année n'a pas épargné la France qui a été touchée par une période de sécheresse non seulement intense, mais aussi inhabituellement prolongé sur une majeure partie de, de son territoire. Pour mieux gérer cette ressource vitale, nous avons lancé le 29 septembre dernier un exercice global de planification de la gestion de l'eau. Ce plan, il englobe les enjeux de biodiversité avec un objectif de baisse de prélèvement en eau de 10% d'ici 2025 et de 25% d'ici 2035. Il traite également du partage de la ressource entre les différents usages, de la sécurisation de l'accès de tous à une eau potable de qualité, de la préservation et la restauration des écosystèmes, ainsi que la lutte contre l'imperméabilisation et la prévention des inondations. Sous le contrôle de notre Premier ministre, il doit nous permettre de mieux planifier les actions dont nous avons besoin pour accélérer la transition écologique et nous adapter efficacement aux conséquences du changement climatique. Le gouvernement français a par ailleurs donné un nouveau cadre au dispositif de gestion de la sécheresse en France en visant l'harmonisation des mesures des restrictions des usages de l'eau. L'objectif est d'optimiser l'organisation de la gestion de la crise et de gérer les situations de pénurie d'eau en assurant, dans le respect des équilibres naturels, les usages prioritaires de la santé, la sécurité civile et l'approvisionnement en eau potable. La France soutient sans réserve l'Espagne et le Sénégal qui soulignent 
qu'il convient de passer urgemment de la gestion de crise à des mesures de préparation et d'adaptation à la sécheresse. L'objectif est de réduire considérablement et structurellement la vulnérabilité et l'exposition à tous les niveaux. À ce titre, une coopération internationale accrue est plus que bienvenue. Nous devons utiliser toutes les opportunités pour avancer en ce sens. Dans moins d'un mois, la COP15 sur la biodiversité doit nous permettre d'adopter un nouveau cadre mondial de protection de la biodiversité. Cela doit être un outil utile permettant de limiter les effets tout autant que certaines causes de la sécheresse et de la désertification. Je pense notamment à la restauration des zones humides, la lutte contre l'imperméabilisation des sols et la préservation aussi des espaces naturels vitaux. Voilà, c'était les mots que je voulais avoir devant vous. Merci encore pour cette initiative. Je vous remercie pour votre attention. Thank you so much. I now invite the minister from Germany, and after that, we will hear from Slovakia. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, first of all, thank you to Spain and to Senegal for this important initiative. Ladies and gentlemen, droughts, droughts are painful remind us of why we are here at COP27 the repercussion of our harmful interaction with nature uh, are global. Some regions, when we hear that before, uh, in some regions, and some people are hit harder, but, but droughts have become a serious, a devastating phenomenon worldwide. So what applies to the Agenda 2030 as a whole also applies here. We are in this together. It is not only true that no country is immune to drought, but I believe it is also true that no country is well prepared for droughts. So we see more and more people starving due to droughts. To address the global food crisis, the German G7 presidency together with the World Bank have initiated the Global Alliance for Food Security and beyond the immediate response, the Alliance aims, to, uh, uh, aims at transforming our global agri-food system to become more resilient also against droughts. The evidence is really clear. We need a paradigm shift from emergency response and crisis management to increase resilience and reducing vulnerability and that is why Germany has become a funding member of the International Drought Resilience Alliance. The fact that drought resilience is a common challenge for many governments worldwide constitutes the added value of a global approach. Not every government has to struggle on its own. We can and we should embark on this together given that we do not have much time and resources to react. A global approach is simply faster and more efficient. So as has been stated, drought is a multi-sectoral issue and accordingly we unfortunately currently lack an international institution with an overarching mandate for, for drought. Based on the joint EU position, Jiminy stressed that drought-related measures should be strengthened under the framework of the exist mechanism and implementation should be better coordinated. One of the institutions with the core mandate for drought resilience is the UNCCD, and thanks to its efforts, 60 countries have already prepared drought action plans and more are to come. And this year's COP15 had focus on drought resilient, not least with the new established intergovernmental working group on drought. And Germany highly appreciates this work done by UNCCD and welcome that UNCCD already pushed towards a proactive approach, one that prioritized prevention and it is rooted in a just transition. So together with UNCCD, Germany supports land-based approaches for drought risk reduction. In my ministry, 
we believe that sustainable land and water management need to be mainstreamed jointly in proactive and preventive drought risk management. And as an example, German Development Corporation supports reforestation, vegetation, co vegetation cover, and water spreading barriers to control erosion and increase soil moisture. And this in turn allows for longer and more reliable uh, cultivation periods and higher yields of food and fodder and improving the food security of local communities. And these measures are most effective when building on local institutions and addressing the needs and capacities of the most vulnerables. And this is what all our coordination efforts should focus on. We need local, national, and multi action to embark on droughts and it is interconnected challenges together. Germany supports a stronger coordination and integration as now more than ever, it is time to act together. Thank you. Thank you so much for those very enlightening words, Minister. I'm very happy to give the floor now to the European Commission, the European Commissioner who will properly say his full name. Thank you very much and good evening to, to, to everyone. I'm the European Commissioner for Environment, Oceans and Fisheries, Virginia Sinkiewicz, and it's a pleasure to be with you today. Honorable ministers, uh, ladies and gentlemen, Desertification is becoming a massive crisis and with fertile lands uh, turning to dust all around the globe. At recent UN meeting, over 130 countries voiced their concern. Europe is of course no exclusion. Europe is suffering too. And not only in the south, every year, 15% of our land area and 17% of our population are now affected by drought. And these numbers climb higher every year and the fundamental reason is clear our actions are warming the planet scientists speak of a brief and closing window to secure a livable future and we must listen to them the reminder of this decennium is crucial to secure our future we must continue with cutting emissions we have to go climate neutral but this is not enough we must act on other areas too. Those scientists also call for urgent action to halt and reverse biodiversity loss and restore degraded ecosystems. So in addition to higher targets for emissions reductions, the commission has also presented a nature restoration law. It's a new approach to bringing nature back into our lives and to address the damage of the past. It comes with EU-wide targets and specific actions for particular types and landscapes. That includes, for instance, restoring wetlands, removing obstacles so rivers flow freely and ensuring that flood plains can play their role. By retaining water like a sponge, they can lessen the impacts of both floods and droughts. Because when we work with nature and not against it, we get multiple benefits for climate, people, and nature. All this also needs to be part of the framework to be agreed at the Biodiversity COP15 in Montreal in just a few weeks' time. An ambitious framework is essential for catalyzing action for biodiversity by all countries, all stakeholders, and through the UN system. We need to step up the implementation of the nature-based solutions and cleverly combine them with technology and societal approaches. Many of these solutions are highly cost-effective. So they also represent a huge investment opportunities. They pave the way towards a future of food security, of, fo of soils that stay fertile, and of a society that is more resilient. And I truly believe that this is future that we need. Thank you. Thank you so much. Commissioner, I am now pleased to welcome to the table Portugal, Secretary of State. Thank you. After that, we'll have the U.S. and then Saudi Arabia. Hi. 
distinguished executive secretary of the UNCCD, honorable colleague, uh, Minister Teresa Ribera and Aliun Nedoy, dear representatives of relevant international organizations supporting this event. Allow me to start by congratulating uh, you for organizing this relevant event and to address a particular world to my colleague Teresa and Aliun for the efforts they have been raising to bring drought to the international political agenda with the launching of the International Drought Resilience Alliance. Following the presidents of Prime Minister Antonio Costa in IDRA's lo uh, launching event last week, it is my pleasure to be here today to reinforce the commitment of Portugal with this initiative and to demonstrate our willingness to help you turning into a too valuable platform. Indeed, droughts represent a significant challenge to our societies and it is imperative that we look, um, we look them as, structural, as a structural challenge that we need to face with structural solutions. We can no longer afford to look at drought and water scarcity as a phenomenon associated to extreme weather events. Droughts are being felt by our citizens in their day-to-day -day lives, and we need to be better prepared to respond to this challenge. In Africa, as, it, as today in many different European countries, droughts are reality and no longer limited to a specific country or region. In the framework of the European Union, Portugal, since 2007, has been using its voice within the EU to call for a stronger attention to be devoted to this issue. It was one of the priorities of our presidency in 2007, and again, it was one of our priorities in our 2021 EU Council presidency. Managing droughts is, uh, is even harder when we have transboundary um, river basins shared with a country that is facing the same challenge as we are. This is the case for Portugal and Spain. Yes, droughts are multisectoral and transboundary in nature, and that is the reason why cooperation needs, to, needs really to be our key priority to manage it. Portugal faced this year the most serious hydrological drought this century in mainland Portugal, mainly to the, to the combination of extreme low rainfall and unusually high temperatures. July 2022 was the warmest year in the last 92 years. And this is the fifth consecutive year with below average rainfall, causing a persistent rainfall deficit situation. With this scenario, it was critical to reinforce our dialogue with Spain and in the framework of the Albufeira Convention, the bilateral treaty that we have in place since 1998, to reinforce in a common approach with Spain the mechanisms that will allow us to better prepare and manage these events in the future. Internally, dialogue among different water users is also critical and I highlight the importance of agriculture, of course. Distinguished colleagues, Portugal is living this reality and is learning to live with it. We stand committed with a proactive approach to deal with water scarcity and drought, and we are ready to share our experience with all relevant partners in order to learn and to share our own challenges. This is a path that we should pursue in the framework of this alliance, but is also a message that we need to be able to carry to the UN 2023 Water Conference highlighting the urgency of international cooperation in the field of water scarcity and drought. Thank you very much. Fantastic. I see this alliance is growing by the minute. Kindly allow me to bring the Assistant Secretary of State from the U.S. Good evening. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you to Senegal and España for recognizing the importance of this issue. Water is life. We recognize the need to address the response to the drought, and we recognize that drought is one of the impacts of climate change. We are very pleased to see the increasing importance and the, the recognition of this important issue as part of these discussions. It seems man, many of us are using the same talking points for, the, for this panel presentation because we're saying the similar messages of the need to coordinate and collaborate and be responsive to the issues we are seeing. The United States very much recognizes the importance of this issue. We are experiencing real impacts at home we are experiencing unprecedented conditions around our country as a result of the changing climate and the drought. 
we also recognize that these impacts are shared with other countries around the world. On June 1st, our Vice President Harris announced our action plan for global water security. We recognize that water security is a security issue, and we recognize the need to collaborate and take proactive actions across the globe to address these issues. We also announced and described the various interagency actions we are taking within the U.S. to address our drought conditions. We are happy to share that information and share the experiences we have had in addressing the impacts with our other country states. We were very pleased last week, through the leadership of Special Envoy Kerry, to be able to join the International Drought Resilience Alliance. We look forward to developing additional shared actions and developing the agreement further with our partners. In September of this year, we announced the President's Emergency Action Plan for Adaptation and Resilience. We are pleased that that plan contains a water action component. We recognize the need to use and develop sound science and to share and expand the availability of data and science with our partners. We recognize the need to build capacity and develop the ability to, to share the information that we have. And we are also looking forward to generating additional sources of funding to be able to support that shared capacity, that additional capacity. Thank you very much for recognizing the importance of this issue and allowing us the opportunity to work together. We stand ready to develop additional actions and we look forward to increasing our capabilities to be resilient to the drought conditions and the climate change impacts that we are seeing. Thank you. Thank you so much. And now I think our final country speaker is uh, from the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Please, we welcome you to the stage. Thank you very much. Thank you, Spain and Senegal, for this important initiative. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Excellences, ladies and gentlemen, I'm truly delighted to participate with you today at this important high-level event on global actions aiming at increasing drought resilience for society, ecosystems, and economics. Droughts are undoubtedly a global risk which pose a significant threat on livelihoods and ecosystems, and in extreme axis, sustained droughts could have adverse impacts on food security, health, population, displacement, migration, and even conflicts. During the course of the human history, significant droughts events have been recorded which have changed the course of human life and prosperity in impact areas. It should be emphasized that droughts, events, and their severe impacts are not limited to specific cont content only and are transboundary in nature. As an example, although Africa is affected more than any other content, accounting for 44% of the global total Let's don't forget the recent significant drought event which has been recorded in Europe this summer where combined with heat waves had affecting millions of people. Ladies and gentlemen, droughts as a global phenomenon impacting both developing and developed countries and mandates establishing international collaborations, partnership and initiatives. The Middle East Green Initiative, MGI, is an example towards this direction. This initiative is a first of its kind. 
inaugurated in 2021 by His Royal Highness Prince Mohammed bin Salman, Crown Prince and Prime Minister in Saudi Arabia and spearheaded by Saudi Arabia. The MGI with the SGI, the Saudi Green Initiative, at national level demonstrate the kingdom's commitment to lead international sustainability efforts and intends to deliver one of the largest reforestation outcome in the world, contributing significantly to emissions reduction targets under the Paris Agreement, and preserving the restoring biodiversity, a key action in increasing the resilience of drought risks. It is aiming to increase cooperation and efforts in the region to restore 200 million hectares of degraded land, plant 50 billion trees, and increase its vegetation cover by 12 times. On Monday, 7 November 2022, during the second Middle East Green Initiative Summit, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia announced its strong and solid support to the MGI aims, nonetheless, the contribution of all partners in necessary for this initiative by accomplish its activities and projects. Furthermore, Saudi Arabia is playing a leading role in establishing regional centers and programs that will facilitate regional coordination, deliver against the MGI uh, targets, create the infrastructure, and promote knowledge sharing at regional and international level. In this regard, two regional centers have been inaugurated in 2021, focused on climate change and sand and dust storm warnings, and one regional program focused on cloud seeding, aiming to enhance rainfall. Ladies and gentlemen, droughts as a complex naturally occurring phenomena with multifactored impacts requires collaboration at global scale to drive policies focused on actions while addressing common global challenges, these actions should be pragmatic, driven by informed decisions based on significant evidences and supported by financial resources. As noted previously, droughts have not boundaries, hence a pro proactive and cooperative approach at global scale is mandatory to increase drought resilience and reducing the risk to people, the economy, and ecosystems. Before I finish, I would like to size this event as an opportunity to welcome you to the next UNCCD 16th Conference of Parties, COP16, which will be take place in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia in 2024, emphasizing Saudi Arabia's strong commitments to the purpose of addressing the global drought challenges and tangible, programmatic, and cooperative manner. I wish this event all the success, and thank you very much. Thank you so much. And this concludes our ministerial session, part of this session. And you've heard it here. There is a lot of work to be done. We heard it from the Honorable Rodriguez that there's areas of equity that need to be addressed. We also heard from speakers highlighting the need to combine science and technology to accelerate action on the ground. And most importantly, you heard that we must come together collaboratively for urgent action on the ground. So this next session is about how different organizations plan to come together, what they're bringing to the table specifically to contribute to accelerating action on the ground for drought resilience. We have a stellar lineup. We have 30 minutes, so we can all do the math. That's about three to four minutes per speaker. And to start us off will be Elizabeth Mrema from the Convention on Biological Diversity. I hope she'll start making her way to the podium so that she can tell us specifically what CBD Ken is bringing to this table, and I'm sure she'll mention the important 
collaboration across the three Rio conventions. Thank you so much, um, Elizabeth, for kicking off this session. Good evening, all. Excellencies, Executive Secretary of the Convention on <coughs> Decertification, my dear colleague Ibrahim, all distinguished speakers who have spoken before me, and they have said it loud and clear, I don't think I need to repeat, not how important droughts are but how we should all be concerned with the drought situation. And that's actually what we have been reminded, the essence of this launch which is happening this evening. Vulnerability to drought often starts with the loss of biodiversity. However, there are also examples of reducing drought risks that are working positively for biodiversity. Diverse agricultural systems with soils rich in organic matter are more resilient. Restoring ecosystems with a variety of local species increases, econo uh, <coughs> increases ecosystem resilience to drought. The crises of our world demand coherent action. The post-2020 Global Biodiversity Framework to be adopted later next month at the Convention on Biological Diversity Conference of the Parties will address the intertwined challenges of drought, climate change, and biodiversity loss. Many of the proposed targets would contribute squarely to preventing droughts such as reducing threats to biodiversity, promoting sustainable use, supporting implementation and mainstreaming, and fostering enabling conditions. Particularly, actions on conservation and restoration of ecosystems, ensuring genetic diversity of wild and domestic species, and ensuring benefits and livelihood for people through the sustainable management of terrestrial and freshwater ecosystems. Opportunities lie in linking national drought management plans and national biodiversity strategies and action plans, including as part of disaster risk reduction or climate change strategies. We need this alignment for actions to take hold, including stakeholders, indigenous peoples and local communities making decisions together and contributing to those decision making. I'm heartened to see the enthusiasm and engagement for the International Drought Resilience Alliance and I do congratulate the governments of Spain and governments of Senegal for taking this lead role in this inception. I congratulate equally all those joining the Alliance for your commitment to reduce vulnerability to drought. I know we are here in good hands of the UNCCD Secretariat, and I do thank them sincerely for the hard work. Myself from the CBD Secretariat do stand with you to support the implementation of this Alliance which will help us all to coherently address multiple global agreed goals. Thank you very much. Asante sana, Mama Rema. Uh, I am very pleased now. We'll be skipping the order just a tad. I see that Mrema is distracting my next speaker, Marco Lamberti. <laughs> I welcome you um, to the floor to tell us exactly and specifically in three minutes what the World Wildlife Fund for Nature will be bringing to this alliance. Then we will go to IUCN. Well, thank you very much. I, I'm, I'm so happy you might certainly make you so happy and, and positive. 
Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, excellencies, it's, um, uh, the evidence is uh, overwhelmingly clear about a number of things. First of all, that there are two sides of the uh, source, of the origin of droughts. One is climate change, obviously, but the other one is nature loss. And I highlight in nature loss because it is pretty clear how the destruction, the degradation, of ecosystems is actually undermining nature's incredible role and contribution in mitigating and adapting to extreme droughts. And of course, nature loss drives much more than that. Climate instability drives uh, food and water insecurity, drives risk to human health and nutrition. Recognizing all this is a massive cultural shift from uh, decades, centuries of taking nature for granted and highlights and make us understand more clearly than ever before the dependencies, our dependencies on nature. So vis-a-vis -vis the Alliance, it's so important, we feel in WWF, that um, the Alliance focus, one focal area of the Alliance is actually nature-based prevention, mitigation, and adaptations to droughts and a big role in designing and supporting the implementation of uh, nature-based actions to prevent extreme droughts. But in order to enable this, let me finish by saying that uh, today we are in COP27, the COP on climate. In less than a month's time, Elizabeth just mentioned, we have an incredible opportunity to fill an uh, in incredibly important gap that we are living today. The gap is clarity on a global goal for nature as we have for climate. We are lacking the clarity today. And in Montreal, under the UN Convention of Biological Diversity, the world has the opportunity to embrace a global goal for nature, a nature-positive global goal, that will actually uh, give the clarity to the world, allow contributions from governments, corporate sector, investors, and consumers towards a common global goal for nature one that delivers more nature at the end of the decade than at its start, and contributing in the way to strengthen the resilience of nature and the contribution of nature to fighting and combating extreme droughts. It's an unmissable opportunity, and we hope we all rally around that challenge in December in Montreal. But let me finish by saying WBF commends and salutes the, uh, the launch of the Alliance, and um, we are steady and ready to support in any way possible. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for bringing up the word strengthening the resilience of nature. I now like to hand the podium over to the International Union for Conservation of Nature, Mr. Uh, Dr. Bruno Overlay. Thank you. Three minutes. Thank you so much. <coughs> so much has, al has already been said. So. Um, I will, I will repeat some of them. I mean, the, the, the evidence is clear. Droughts events are increasing in frequency and uh, in intensity. We know that uh, this impacts all aspects of our life. It impacts, in particular, food production. It causes migrations, in particular, of poor populations. We know that uh, by 2050, a large part of humanity, maybe the majority of humanity, will experience in one way or the other droughts. Droughts is a, it's a complex phenomenon, as we have, say, as we have heard uh, from several speakers. Climate change is the main drivers, but also land degradation, broken ecosystems, incapable to deliver ecosystem services as they were used to do in the past, trigger additionally droughts and the consequences of droughts. And in this sense, it is important to invest in land health. It is, in, it is important in of recreating uh, the function of ecosystem and biodiversity. In this sense, uh, land 
restoration is one of the main weapons, the main tools that we have to combat about against this challenge. Land restoration is a nature-based solution, is one of the main nature-based solution, and, uh, and it, is, uh, it needs sound understanding of the ecosystem functions, it needs enabling conditions, it needs investments, it has to be high quality and uh, protect the rights of populations and uh, of uh, uh, indigenous people. But at the same time, these are measures that are highly cost efficient. They deliver a lot of co-benefits in terms of safety, in terms of biodiversity, in terms of ecosystem services. I congratulate the government of Spain and of, uh, uh, <clears throat> and of Senegal, and of course, uh, the Secretariat of UNCCD to launch and convene this alliance around this very important topic, and the UCN will stay uh, ready to support with uh, science, knowledge, policy support, and advocacy. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I'm very pleased to welcome WMO to the stage. And after that, we will have TNC. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, partners, thanking the United Nations Convention to Combat Desertification, Dr. Ibrahim, thank you for all your hard work. Last couple of years, the Convention has really done excellent. WMO and its members are supportive of the work of the UNCCD, especially the National Meteorological and Hydrological Services of the world. WMO has supported the aims of the Convention since it has been established. WMO does not work alone on drought issues. WMO and the Global Water Partnership co-sponsored the Integrated Drought Management Program and partners with over 40 partner organizations, including UNCCD, FAO, UNESCO, and many others. The IDP, IDMP provides technical support to members on drought issues. IDMP has developed the three pillars of integrated drought management, drought early warning monitoring, drought vulnerability risk assessment, and the risk mitigation preparedness and response. The WMO is happy to join the support, the International Drought Resilience Alliance being led by Spain and Senegal. This alliance can raise the profile of drought issues among government leaders and its collaborative plat platform to catalyze the political momentum and actions that supports countries, cities and communities. It aims to go beyond disaster response to reduce countries and community vulnerability to drought by promoting effective and efficient preparedness and adaptive measures. This, this is an important initiative, ladies and gentlemen, and we would like you to join all of us, please. WMO further supports the UNCCD bodies, such as the UNCCD Science Policy Interface and the Intergovernmental Working Group on Drought. IDMP partners are also working on organizing a follow-up and high-level meeting on national drought policies in September, October 2023, which will focus on moving from policy into action. A couple of short comments from the United Nations Secretary General Guterres. We announced on the 23rd of March 2022 the development of an action plan for early, all early warning systems for all within five years. And you may recall he requested the WMO to lead this initiative. This action plan was developed and it was launched by the UNSG with our Secretary General last week. In this action plan, we've made sure that drought is in there. Water and climate and drought is inseparable. We cannot tackle the one without the other. And please go and read the, the action plan. Everything is in there. We mark this occasion as an important milestone. This is where we move beyond words and into collaborative action. Colleagues, when I think about what success looks like in five years, just to summarize that part, I see a future where we put aside our needs 
for individual visibility in supporting countries because this is not going to get us to our goal. Success will be measured on how effective we can work together to support the countries to ensure everybody is protected by early warning systems in five years and drought is one of them. Rest assured the WMO will be working together with UNCCD on drought and other issues in the years to come. Dear delegates, we thank you for your kind consideration and the WMO is very, uh, very happy to work with you going forward. With this, merci, thank you, shukran, um, muchas gracias, <laughs> shishi, and spasiba. Thank you so much, Dr. Sander, and for reminding us that we need to move beyond words and also for providing your vision in five years. I'm so pleased now to offer the next three minutes to uh, Maria Helena Semedo, Deputy Director General of FAO. Please come to the podium. Thank you and a very good evening to all. My dear brother, Ibrahim Tiao, Executive Secretary of UNCCD, dear members of the podium, dear participants, I was supposed to speak in another panel, but I was in another meeting of a Global Clean Air Coalition. It's just now I finish. But I was su supposed to share with you some ref reflection on how to reduce the vulnerability of livelihoods and ecosystem and enhance the resilience their resilience to drought. I will go straight away with some powerful mechanism we consider. The first one is the power of communities. We see the proof in community work and solidarity in Africa. We need to support this and scale it up in other regions and countries. The second is the power of sustainable mechanization and re renewable energy. We must scale up updated and sustainable infrastructure of water mobilization powered by renewable energy. The power of knowledge, access to data and information. The power of regional cross-sectoral and cross-border cooperation. And the power of soft-south cooperation and triangular cooperation between countries, region and communities. And to harness this powerful, powerful mechanism, what is FAO doing? We are supporting farmers with delf, Delfino plug, with mimics traditional, the half moons to furrow faster, with less work and collect more rainwater to restore degraded land, and to sow and plant across the great green wall. And this, it has been important to restore land, to improve agriculture, and for women, because they have been the ones with the children in their back working in a very hard, difficult conditions. We are facilitating South-South cooperation between Brazil and Sahel countries through rainwater harvesting with one million cistern village under the Sahel Initiative. And I can tell you that this initiative in Senegal has proof how we can collect water from the rain and keep it at house, giving water to the families and improving agriculture and livelihoods. We join force with ECOWAS and UNIS to develop an integrated water resource management program and water accelerator for West Africa. As member of Drought Initiative, FAO is carrying out a jeff funded project in partnership with NCCD to help implement 31 national drought plans, and we hope we'll be able to expand to others. We are developing a drought portal to provide resources, share integrated and sustainable solution, and share strategies that work to share best practices. This is particularly important for countries and regions that, that have not yet experienced drought and will have to learn how to cope with when it comes. These are examples 
that, some, that are approaches to prevent and reduce the impact of droughts. Because we need to work in prevention, in early warning systems. And we have shown that it pays back. If you prevent, it's two to five if you only respond to droughts. Approach that are adapted to local condition. Approach that are nourished by experience and tradition. A big task now is to fund and prioritize such approaches. This is how we'll get communities and nationals, nations working together with the right technology, information, proactive attitudes to be pre prepared for drought. We work in collaboration with our sister agencies in the UN. We work with countries, we work communities, count on FAO. Thank you. Thank you so much, Maria Helena. You always give us impactful imagery using the word power and the power of this collaboration. And in that spirit, I offer um, the podium now to uh, Darcy Vetter, Global Head of Policy and Government Relations at TNC. And then from there, we'll move on to our private sector partner. Thank you. Good evening. As uh, she noted, I am Darcy Vetter, the Global Head of Policy and Government Relations for the Nature Conservancy, or TNC. We appreciate the leadership of Spain, Senegal, and the UN Convention on, to Combat Desertification and are committed to supporting the new International Drought Resilience Alliance. We echo the comments of other speakers this, this evening who noted that drought is both caused and exacerbated by nature loss, and we recognize that drought can have severe negative consequences for communities, for health and well-being, and for nature. This evening, I want to briefly share examples of TNC's work on drought resilience from around the world in three categories, large river basins, food systems, and in protecting uh, urban water supplies. The Colorado River Basin spans seven states and two countries and serves nearly 40 million people, and it is facing its driest 20 years in the last 1,200. TNC is working with farmers, tribes, water resource managers, and policymakers to find ways to reduce demand and to make, uh, make do with less. This basin is on the leading edge of globally in confronting the overallocation of water in an era of drought and in dry of drying. In Spain, TNC has partnered with Danone to identify sustainable nature-based solutions and agricultural management practices to reduce water consumption, retain water on farms, and minimize impacts on water quality. And in Africa, TNC has built a dozen water funds, protecting water security for cities and farmers by enhancing watershed health in Kenya, Senegal, Morocco, South Africa, and other countries. Across this work, our common thread is nature. We know that nature-based solutions can be deployed to reduce drought risk and to build resilience for people in our food systems and our water supplies. The Nature Conservancy commends the goals of the Alliance and cannot overstate how this high-level vision and support can motivate, enable, and empower local communities to build secure water futures. We commit to bringing TNC's capacities, including science, innovative finance, and on-the-ground implementation to support this Alliance. We look forward to working with you on this important endeavor. Thank you. Thank you so much for those concrete examples. And you've heard the term private sector mentioned multiple times today. So it is my pleasure to welcome Ms. Marcella Chacon, representative of Bayer, to come to the podium. Big responsibility here. You're our only private sector representative today. <laughs> Good evening, excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. Quite a responsibility we have indeed. And in this case, when it comes to drought, nobody is an observer. We all have to work on that. Drought unites all people and farmers around the world. It makes no distinctions. And it is as simple as this. If there's no water, there's no food. 
We will face the La Nina weather phenomenon for third year in a row. This will lead to drought persisting in China, Africa, Australia, North America, and Europe. Food systems will come to a breaking point. As a representative of the Women Business Coalition, I want to be clear. We stand by the 1.5 degree limit. It's a limit, not a target. But let's not admire the problem. Let's look at concrete actions that were taken towards mitigation and adaptation. Water is core to Bayer's climate adaptation plans. We are grateful to the UNCCD, Spain, and Senegal for including the private sector in the IDRA from the very beginning and are honored to contribute. Bayer is committed to increase the water efficiency use for rice production. Almost 50% of all fresh water in Asia at one point is passing through its big, important food foundation. In similar fashion, we are working with corn, cotton, vegetable seeds, and wheat. Together with our partners, we want to provide access to digital tools to smallholders in different countries around the world. We support the protection of forests and wetlands, an important source of biodiversity, but also of green waters. We stand by the Glasgow Declaration to achieve net zero deforestation by 2030. And to this end, the LEAF Coalition has already mobilized $1.5 billion to be invested in nature. Bayer spends annually $2.5 billion in R&D. This is three times more of the global spending for the CGIAR. We will focus our full inv investments in three Rs, reduce GHG emissions caused by the agricultural sector, support farmers by removing atmospheric carbons, and strengthening resilience against the increasing extreme weather events. It's a mitigation and adaptation program. Droughts increase the certification and make it harder to reach our goal to reverse the trend and restore degraded land. Let's work together by combining knowledge in biology, chemistry, physics to make this happen. We will be rewarded by nature with more green water. Mitigation and adaptation is the new M and A for business. It's what sustainability is all about. We look forward to contributing to the success of the Alliance. Many of the already 8 billion people alive today in this world will be thankful. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you so much. As you can see, we're really running against the clock here. Uh, so we will have OECD next and then UNDRR. So is OECD here? Oh. Great, so we will move right on to Dr. Jonathan Stone from UNDRR, and uh, thank you so much for keeping to time, Jonathan. <laughs> Good evening, everybody. Um, I'm here to speak on behalf of Mami Mizutori, the Special Representative for UNDRR. Um, our global assessment report in 2022 suggests that an increase of 30% more droughts by 2030, and this is probably a best case scenario. And indeed, we've heard from other speakers that everything is connected, especially when it comes to droughts. What we can see are risks rolling into each other. So we can no longer afford a hazard bias where we try and focus on the hazard alone. We need a rethink of risk management to refocus on vulnerability reduction. Our special report on droughts from 2021, which I won't go into too much detail here for brevity, but you should all perhaps have a look at if you haven't already, suggests three big wins. Number one, invest in drought risk identification and mapping. Number two, accelerate adaptive social protection that's targeted at those who are most exposed, preferably with cash. And number three, ensure that whatever we do is socially just, not just because this is the right thing to do, but because it is the most effective way to tackle this. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jonathan. I'm very pleased now to welcome Mr. Pablo, uh, Chair of the Global Water Partnership. The floor is yours. Thank you. Authorities, uh, ladies and gentlemen, it is for me a real pleasure to be here. We want to um, celebrate 
the launching of this international alliance, GWP, Global Water Networks, uh, is very much committed to work in a systemic approach to manage water in the world. As you know, our main concept is integrated water resources management, and we uh, really believe that the world is facing a big change in the water cycle, and we need to realize that if we don't apply integrated water resources management, then we will not be able to solve and to deal with that. Adaptation is basically having to do with that. As it was mentioned by my colleague from WMO, together we developed the integrated drought management program and we will be uh, working into that in the next few years and we believe it is a, a program that can very much collaborate with this international alliance and offer to the international alliance a, um, a work on the ground, so to say, together with our partners, which are more than 3,500 across the world. And last but not least, many things that have already been said, I am in full in agreement, but let me point very quickly to one issue that I believe is a, a key part of that, and this is the value of water. We should work ways around the value of having water and the value of lacking water. Many countries have already been hit by droughts, and many more will be in the near future, and in some cases, the consequences are going to be dramatic. And if we don't work out a way of having the value of water to be a real signal for decisions and also for policies, and in particular, and I'm very glad of the previous intervention for the private sector, so that the private sector finds a possibility of increase its commitment and investments because the value and the capacity for realizing value is there, then we will probably not be at the level of the challenge. So congratulations again, and thank you very much, and count with Global Water Partnership. Thank you so much. Now we have Ms. Alicia Montalvo from the Cooperación Andina de Fomento. Uh, Alicia, bienvenida to the podium. <laughs> Thank you very much, Honorable Minister of Senegal, Minister of Spain, Mr. Ibrahim Theo. Ladies and gentlemen, for the Development Bank of Latin America, GAF, it is a great honor to join today the International Drought Resilience Alliance, which stresses and focuses on one of the most important problems that Latin America and Caribbean countries are suffering. Thank you for the initiative. We are fully convinced on the necessity to work in the preventive action to improve the resilience, especially on the agricultural sector and the food system, both highly affected by climate change in our region. Drought, as well as land degradation, extreme climate phenomena, are negatively affecting Latin American Caribbean countries, implying losses in lives and GDP up to 3%, including damages in energy and water infrastructures, increasing poverty, inequality, and vulnerability. GAF, now with 20 country members, is taking important steps to become the Green Bank of Latin America and the Caribbean. We have committed to devote $25 billion to green-related projects and programs in the coming five years. Adaptation to the impacts of climate change and land degradation, with a special focus in the agricultural sector, will be a crucial part of our portfolio in the coming years. CAF wants to join this alliance and commits to take determined action to support Latin American countries to face the problem of droughts through innovative action. CAF wants to be a relevant partner in their efforts to face climate change and reach prosperity. This initiative has the potential to create new consensus that are needed to make the voice of Latin American region heard. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. That was an absolutely inspiring session, hearing the voices of the different organizations. 
Now we will hear the enthusiastic, energetic voice of our youth representative, Ms. Patricia Combo, UNCCD land hero and founder of Padre Initiative from Kenya, where I am also based. Patricia, give us the words of wisdom, the way forward from the youth perspective. The floor is yours. Thank you very much. My name is Patricia Combo, UNCCD land hero from Kenya. And I run a community-based organization working on sustainable land use practices. Today, as we gather here in Sharm El Sheikh to deliberate on one key term, together for implementation. For us in the land and drought space, together for implementation means rising up from drought together to creating a long-lasting legacy on land. The International Drought and Resilience Alliance reminds me of undying spirit of Ubuntu, togetherness, joining efforts to fight one monster of our time, land degradation, drought, desertification, and climate crisis. As a young woman and youth at the front line of climate crisis, I see ARDA as a vehicle that will help us transit from the current emergency response and help in building resilience. It gives me hope knowing that the world currently realizes that no country is immune to drought. With so many players, my hope is that this vehicle will not run out of fuel along the way and that it will deliver us to the promised space. We request that this vehicle will not divert its mission as we've seen a lot of initiatives do so. But this transformative vehicle, under the leadership of the government of Spain and Senegal, will be truthful to its mission, will be transparent, honest, and will help us drive the political, social, and economical ambition. As a young person, I envision an alliance, I envision an alliance that will not fail to open its doors to accommodate more countries on board, faith actors, academia, civil society, young people, and indigenous communities, because land is our common identity. I understand the uncertainties of climate financing for mitigation and adaptation, but this cannot be a sufficient excuse for ina inaction, because Health land is solution to almost all environmental crises we are facing today. It is a key to safer, just, prosperous, and, peace plan and, and prosperous planet. For peace, prosperity, and equality are built on communities that are resilient. We all have solutions to drought, and they're all tied to collaborative approach. What we need from the Alliance is to help us fast track technology transfer, mobilize resources needed for restoration, and invest in early warning system. And I am confident that this Alliance will deliver. Any single action geared towards building drought resilient communities is a step towards protecting livelihoods, lives, biodiversity, food and water security. And I draw my first challenge to the Alliance through the able leadership of the government of Spain and Senegal to ensure that the one billion hectares earmarked for restoration starts now. It is high time we act because our lives depend on land. And for us young people, we want to see the, the logo of young people is part of civil society because when I was going through the alliance, I saw civil society, I saw amazing flags, but I did not see the term young people. We are enthusiastic, we have energy, we are innovation, and as UNCCD land heroes and young people in the land space, we commit to support the alliance in ensuring that everything that is committed is implemented because we young people, we are united for land. Thank you. Thank you so much, Patricia. And now is our closing remarks. I would like to sincerely thank our UNCCD Executive Secretary, the ministers of Spain and Senegal, all the 
government representatives who spoke today, all the representatives from the organizations, I truly believe we are now closer to global action for drought resilience. And because we are clearly running out of time, allow me to just end the session by saying there is power in partnership.